this paper is widely publicized among Christians. The title of the paper is called The Crusader, and I thought it was interesting, so pay close attention to the symbol in the right corner at the top. The political voice of white Christian America, the premier voice of the white resistance. Make America Great Again. So pay close attention to all those titles and the top corner in the right, the symbol that you're looking at. And so I'm going to go ahead with this video and read an article from a man who says that he's Christian. Trump is what's wrong with America. The Republican frontrunner's fastest turn, serial lies, and knack for being awful are stunning. My sadness of Donald Trump. He goes on to say that he is no fan of Hillary Clinton, yet he says, I live in the U.S. I would vote for her. Lately, my voting habits are being guided by my belief in God and not my desire for more money in my wallet. What I have learned of God is God is love. What I know from God is that we are all God's children. What I have learned from the Bible is that we are not to fear, but the Bible tells us to love your neighbor as yourself. While looking at some graphics for this piece, I ran across the following article, How Can Christians Support Donald Trump? This article states so well many of the thoughts that I have, so I will not repeat them, but I ask you to click on the article and read it. What saddens me is that conservative Christians are the ones that helped Donald Trump obtain the nomination for president and that they are an unwavering core of his support. That fact almost makes me reluctant to refer to myself as a Christian because that, to me, is not very Christian-like. I ask myself, why would I possibly vote for Donald Trump? Hmm. Fear would likely be the primary reason. Fear of Muslims and the fear of illegal Mexicans are two cornerstones of his campaign. Yet, the Bible tells us not to fear. The Bible, in fact, tells us to love our fellow neighbor as we love ourselves. To me, this would be a strong reason for Christians to disqualify Donald Trump as a possible president. The next reason money money would be the second reason despite the numerous bankruptcies of donald trump's companies he may be able to make more deals that would financially benefit americans than clinton would however money and the desire for money is very contrary to christian belief and the way we look at things the next thing Make America Great Again is his campaign slogan. From what I have seen in his behavior and his ideas, that is not the version of America that I see that is being great. I understand people wishing for a simpler time and a good value are good values and morals, but that is not what I'm seeing from Donald Trump. I see a divisive man that is willing to insult anybody and turn people against one another. He does not see all of us as God's children, but instead he sees us as a group of people that he can turn against one another for his own selfish reasons as his benefit. Trump uses the two greatest motivators of people, fear and greed. As a Christian, I believe in love and compassion for my fellow man and I do my best not to segregate people into categories. While I will not accuse Trump of being a racist, I will point out the simple fact his campaign has attracted the major support and strong endorsement of the KKK. They apparently share his vision of what it means to make America great again. Why do I mention that in the article about Trump being an affront to Christianity? Again, a fact from the paper's masthead 
this official newspaper of the KKK's bills itself as pro political voice for the white Christian America. As we approach election day, my greatest sadness is of how Trump is tarnishing Christianity. It pains my heart to imagine Christians celebrating his potential victory as a victory for God's loving people. I see Trump's victory as an affront to God's values and I fear that this will push decent people further away from God and the true meaning of Christianity. I do call myself a Christian and I am extremely embarrassed by what I see in many people that also categorize themselves as Christians. So I thought this was a pretty bold article and it sheds a lot of light as to why so many people are lost. And so I know you're seeing these clips. A lot of people claim to be Christians, primarily a lot of African American people claim to be Christians. And you'll see that earlier on that symbol that was in that paper is tattooed on gangs that are part of KKK or groups that are only for white resistance of other people of different cultures and so that symbol that was on the side of the guy's neck he's a skinhead and if you don't know who skinheads are you just research it on the internet and you will find out it's just like another group that they don't like blacks they don't like Mexican they don't like people that are LGBT they don't like people that aren't white and aren't conservative they don't like people who are other than white so you see a lot of people that will say are claim to be Christian and religious and they support Christianity or whatever their different faiths are but you have a lot of people that don't really really practice all the things that they claim they believe in and they have not really investigated they have not researched where it has come from and they really don't take a look at why some of the things that are going on today continue to repeat themselves but if you really look into what the belief systems are and where they come from and what they have done to people in the past then you might have to question is this real is everyone really believing or doing the same thing and actually carrying out what they claim to be as Christian like or they claim to be as God like there are many different gods but not all people are following the God that people would quote unquote think would be harmless they use the Bible and they use God and they use all of their so-called claim Christianity beliefs to push others out, to exclude others, to draw people away instead of towards. And they use all kinds of Bible scriptures to push people away, to turn people off, to cause people to no longer feel safe. They use sometimes they will use those very books that you call Bibles to persecute people and to validate why they discriminate people and a lot of this has happened before most of us were even born and so you have to really research and wonder why things don't ever really change and that there's so much debate whether they should separate church and state but church has lots of politics involved there are a lot of things that people claim that they're following and that they believe in only if it benefits them and their selfish views so take a look at all of the people that you see right here who are being extremely deceived because the very people that you think or you claim to be worshiping are the very people that are causing you to have the problems that you're having now. 
you're having more protests, you're having more resistance protests, you're having more people that feel like they've been thrown out, you're having people feel as though they've been alienated from their families because of a belief system, and it just creates division. People from their own cultural backgrounds, African American males and females, no longer want to be in relationships with one another because it's being said that African American males are looking to kill African American females. They are wishing death to the women that birth them into the world and that bring about more people of that culture. And then they are looking to go with other people so that they can use that as a weapon to say, oh, we no longer want the women that look like us, we want women that don't look like us. And then they're pushing people of different cultures and backgrounds and pitting them against one another because one thinks, if I'm not black, I'm better than people who aren't black, so I have the right to shoot them, I have the right to not hire them on jobs, I have the right to discriminate them in uh, educational settings, I have the right to throw their application out, I have the right to get them kicked off of programs so that they can be homeless, that they'll have to search for places to live simply because I'm greedy and I want more money. And so this is where we're at in this place and time. We even have people from the same backgrounds who have different political opinions and views. And that is the reason why we have people who are divided. Ever since this election, it has caused even schools of learning and institution enrollments to drop because people no longer want to attend the schools because it's unsafe because they're bringing a climate of hate onto the campuses. And now you have schools who are low performing and teachers don't want to teach and then schools that are higher performing and they have more money and more resources and they're doing more for those children. And so it's almost going back into a time where it is segregated again. And men not respecting women, putting women on the chopping block and making women feel like they have to be in fear. They can't make decisions for themselves and they can't be able to work without feeling like they're going to be sexually harassed and black males feeling like they're being targeted on the daily. So this is where all this is coming from. And the very churches that you claim you're a Christian and you're a member of and that you believe you're not even safe in your own synagogues and your temples and your churches anymore, that's not by accident. You have to wonder who's coming in and who's going to go out and what are they going to go out and what is the intention before they leave? Are they going to take people with them? Are they going to go out because they're going to bomb the church and they're going to put fire to the church and then burn black people? Are they going to kill black people? Or are they just going to kill everybody because they have other religious agendas that they're trying to fulfill in the name of Allah? And so all of these things are happening and you have to wonder why is all of this happening? Why is this happening? You have to question all of these religion, these organizations. Are they there to take your money? Are they there to help the communities and put back into the communities and help your families grow and help you thrive? Or are they there to preach hate, to push people out simply because they have a different way of viewing life than others do? Everybody is not a replica of one another. But there's one thing that is evident, that tolerance, you have to wonder, are they just tolerating me? Or is it tolerance because they're trying to be inclusive? So now we're in a time where everything is volatile, it's violent, and now you have to question, who are these churches? Who are these so-called quote-unquote leaders? Here's a church, a Baptist church, that was burned because there were black people in it. It's in Mississippi. 
and I'm sure there are other churches all over in other countries here and even in the states that have had religious backlash because there's a religion that is against another religion or because there's a belief that's against another belief and so this is what we're seeing what is tolerance you have to ask yourself what really is tolerance do people really actually practice it a fair objective and permissive attitude towards opinions beliefs and practices that differ from one's own do you feel like that's been practiced in your neighborhood in your communities in your schools in your churches if you have any ill feelings that these practices have not really taken place not to the entirety of this definition then there is a problem there's a huge problem and it's not just in one place it's just not with one racial background and group not with one religious group it's everywhere and you notice that most of it has been a lot more heightened since that election in 2016 back in November and so now we're gonna have even more homeless people because of the budget cuts that are about to occur and the other thing that I know that I have heard more recently it's not just gonna affect people that are clients that are on uh, social programs that are subsidized it's also gonna lay off people who work at these organizations that are helping people who are in need so they're gonna be some big layoffs that are gonna happen they're gonna be more unemployment and job loss from these budget cuts as well so it doesn't just affect the initial people who are going to be cut off of programs but also they're going to do cutbacks at these places of employment so that they can save a buck or two and this is where people end up after they come from these churches after they believe in these faiths what does it do for you it causes you to have issues where you are depressed can it be a contributor as to why we have a growing number of people with mental illnesses are some of these illnesses things that have already been there are things that are being created because of the the stressors that we're experiencing having to do with politics and so this is what we're seeing more of in local cities people that are being pushed out and put under freeways and so you can find this a lot in the LA area and LA County and I'm sure there are other places that you can find homelessness and homelessness is just not limited to people being on the street but also taking up living from place to place to place and never being stable and living from motel to motel to motel and never being stable we have a lot of that is going on and that is growing in numbers and so we also have our schools under attack where the test scores are low and they base it on people's color and what they make and what they're projected to make based on race race is a part of America it's always been anyone who tells you it isn't they're in a complete denial of what is going on and they don't want to be honest about what they see and they know has been always happening as long as they're not affected by it and that is what we call some people enjoy privilege and they enjoy the prides of whether they're on the top of someone else based on skin color based on classism based on money and based on who they own and what they own and where they work and whether they make five or six figures or more so you gotta ask yourself where does all this come from and I feel very saddened that African Americans who are supposed to be the biggest supporter of Christianity don't even really realize the real true origin of where it originated from some are starting to wake up 
some didn't know that it really began with the very people who have oppressed you and still oppress you and this is the reason why you're wondering well how come I'm not really able to pay all my bills how come I'm not really able to succeed each area I try to to go into there's always some type of a roadblock because it was set up like that so that you can be passive and not resist and fight back all of the things that have been there to attack you and your character and to attack your accomplishments Hitler was a, a devout Christian Trump's campaign fuels a rise in the KKK and this is happening as we speak and these pamphlets have been distributed that article I read was in 2014 before he was elected and David Duke if you don't know who he is he is a big KKK supporter and he had videos and he wanted to even run as a politician don't know if that happened or not but I wouldn't be surprised if he was put into a position of power they already are we are under attack America was founded as a Christian nation and they're attacking our Christian values America is for whites America first sounds very similar to make America great again doesn't it well it is and look at the background you see the cross and look at the symbol on the woman's robe very much the similar symbol that you've seen on the news outlet and the papers that they had Klu Klux Klan lecture at 8 p.m. tonight Christian Tabernacle these are Christians as well black people black people who call themselves Christian who use the same Bible and the same weapon to push out other people for whatever their reasons to their benefit so Christians what will you do about this all you Christians complaining about moderate Muslims do nothing about Isis what have you done about the KKK you gotta ask yourself these questions who are you following and whom are you following and for what reason and what purpose does it serve you think about the Jim Crow laws whites are superior to blacks in all ways white and black breeding would be produced as a mongrel race violence is acceptable to keep blacks in check and a black male couldn't shake hands with a white male this is what went on and these were laws we serve whites only and to you Mexican people who you have a percentage of white and you always want to name your kids Blanca and you always want to be white well look at this sign we serve whites only no Spanish and no Mexicans so you are not included in that culture believe it or not and this is a symbol Christian values Christian people who claim this is their country and this is their land and they are devout Christians and you are not included in that group so think about what you really are believing in before you start spouting off how Christian you are this group also they're Christian Protestants but they worship and they backed Hitler and they were doing the hail Hitler sign and yes all you people who put out signs saying Jesus saves well guess who else said that and guess who else put up big signs and big symbols letting everybody know that Jesus saves but who is he saving is he saving you black man is he saving you Mexican man is he saving you Chinese man is he saving you women who are not white no he's saving only the people who follow this hateful belief and now you don't see them wearing sheets anymore so you've forgotten about this but 
they are out there and they still exist and they may not be wearing sheets anymore they may be your bosses your manager they could even be your doctor they could be your lawyer they could be in the police department and they could also be the people who you continue to see every Sunday and you support and you don't realize that they do not view you as being important they do not view you they that hate do not view you as being a part of their American values and they don't want you to go to school and if you go to school they don't want you going to school with their kids and they don't want you to be included in their plans and so you have this group that has always been waiting in the shadows waiting for their opportunity to rise again and it has come we are living in a time now where Donald Trump even though he says he doesn't support these people they are his biggest supporters and I do not believe for a second that whatever money that they used to endorse his campaign that it was turned down. We need to think about what we really need to do in America. We need to make America more safe again for all Americans. Because if we don't that dream that Dr. King had, it would be over.